Unit 17, part 13. So we have symbolized the subject. I have the paraphrase here. Um, X is a student and X reads books. X reads books received a quantifier. There exists a Y, just a Y is a book and stands in the relation of it being read to X, <coughs> as it were. Um, I've written in the uh, predicate phrase, right? Again, crucial that it's appearing as the consequent of the conditional, right? We laid down the form first. What's the whole point of the having the one, two, three step procedure? The order between one, two, and three. One, first, identify the overall form, lay it down, keep it in place as you symbolize, as you translate. That's what we've done, and we've kept the form in place. The form is what's written in red, right? Close brackets here, open bracket there. Um, the major operator here, it's an A form, A form categorical. Okay, and as I translate this, it's gonna slot into the right place, namely the predicate of this conditional. Um, okay, so the rephrase is, um, so the predicate in English that was, will enjoy those in the subject class, what about those in the subject class? They will enjoy some of his or her classes and will learn something. Uh, sorry, that should be courses, I think. Um, okay, so I rephrase that as X, right, so it's for all X, if X is a student and... Um, X enjoys some of his or her books. Um, oh, sorry. X reads books. X is a student. X reads books. Then X will enjoy some of X's courses, and X will learn something. Okay, that's the paraphrase. X will enjoy some of X's courses, some of X's courses, genitive, uh, and X will learn something. Okay. Again, what's my first question now? It is. What's the major operator of that propositional function? It is a, that's right, a conjunction, right? And so, right, this is, this is <clears throat> that's the and. So I've got two conjuncts, and it's just a matter of now symbolizing those conjuncts, one after the other. Although the tricky part is getting a handle on um, um, seeing I'm teasing out the what are the relational predicates in the English for these um, various expressions, okay? And when quantifiers are in, when quantifiers are involved, right, and so on. But it's just two two. The first thing is yes, identify it's a conjunction. So, right, um, what's going to so the conjunction is going to go in the place of the overall. Um, consequent, right, so that's conjunct one, everything to the left of the and. Second conjunct, everything to the right of the and. So this is, so first, X will enjoy some of X's courses. Okay, so um, we've got to have uh, um, so some of X's courses. So the student has courses, the student is taking courses um, and also enjoying them. Um, so they have to be courses, as it were, of the student. The student is taking those courses. Um, so the student is standing in the taking relation to some things of which we know that, that they're courses, right? That there's things standing in the relation of um, taking the student stand the student stands in the taking relation to something and that something is their courses right enjoys their courses so we have to say there exists a Z such that Z is a course and X is taking Z notice that this X is right this for all X says for every single X if X is a student and X reads books so this X is is referring to the student who read book who reads books, right? It's, it's like the again uh, scope of the quantifier. The quantifier bind, binds everything. Whatever here, it's like um, th these variables that are bound by the quantifier refer back to the quantifier just as pronouns.
who are back to the subject, right? Dan is Australian and he is happy. He refers back to the subject. <coughs> Similar here, so there is there exists a Z such that Z is a course and X takes the Z. These things are true of the course. And um, right, so we've got the courses, and we're also saying that X will in, the, sub, the student who reads books will enjoy some of those courses. Enjoyment, right, is a relation. You enjoy something, so X, the student, enjoys this Z. There exists a Z, such that Z is a course, X is taking that Z, and X is enjoying that Z. X enjoys Z, right? So that, so there is a Z, three things are true about it. It's a course, it's taken by the student, and the student's going to enjoy it. That's what's being asserted, all three things. Okay? Um, and second conjunct, and X, so it's X will learn something. You must recognize something as a quantifier uh, word, quantifier word. I'm asserting the existence of a thing that X will learn. Um, notice what Quank says here. She says, we do not need a, another one place predicate function um, uh, like we did for courses here. Right? We're asserting that there is something on the end of the learning relationship, such that X is learning something, but we're not told what kind of thing. Right? So we do have a quantifier. Something, of course, will get a quantifier. There exists something. There exists a W, such that um, X learns W. But we're not told what kind of thing. Uh, it's the same explanation as for why the owner of the dog in the previous example didn't get a one-place predicate as well. Okay, Because it might have been a corporation or it might have been a person. We weren't told what kind of things own the job, uh, owned the dog. We only t we were only told that the dog has had an owner. Okay, so I'm referring here to these two um, passages. Um, so the very bottom of very bottom of three thirty one. Notice, however, that it does does not so. Um, the second conjunct, this too is an existential, and we will need another function, um, LXY, for X learns Y. Notice, however, that this does, that it does not say what is learned or what kind of thing is learned. So we can symbolize this phrase by simply saying that there is something that X learns. There exists a W, L, X, W. Then she put it together. So compare that to 328, the previous example with the when we went through any dog that wears a collar has an owner. That was the, the example run through throughout 328 that we had on the board. Um, and there she says, um, okay, so we need the relational predicate OXY for X owns Y. And we can then symbolize the predicate phrase that X has an owner simply as there exists, a, simply as, the word simply again, there, there exists a Z such that O Z X. That is, that there is a Z such that Z owns X. Here we do not need a third class term, a third one place predicate, because the sentence doesn't specify what kind of owner the dog has. Perhaps it's a human being, but it might be a corporate corporation. Okay? A corporation. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so that'll do for that. That's hard. Um, you'll have to do hard ones on the exam, probably not quite this hard. And finally, uh, last few words for Unit 17 that I'll say. Um, the, she makes a few points on 332 after she has completed this example. She goes through another one. Make sure you can follow that. Um, the, the student that hates their teachers. Don't do that one. <laughs> but if you look at 332, um, right, the, the point about how in the natural way, which is this is the natural way of doing these interpretations, um, symbolizations of English into symbols, um, the natural way is for the quantifiers to appear, as it were, in the middle of the sentence, or in the, in, in the middle of the formula, or all over the place. Uh, this big, long one, I don't want to say it's ugly, it's beautiful, <laughs> but it's sort of big, long, and ugly, in my usual way of using that term. Um, but we have four variables, right? And they appear right here, and here, and all the way over here as well. Uh, sorry, these are the quantifiers. But we've got yeah, four variables. 
x, x, y over here, z, and then we need a w over here because we need a different one again. Um, so we've got four variables. Let's look at the next point she makes it. Every variable must be quantified. I did sort of speak to this in a previous part. Um, you cannot, simply because if you don't have every variable bound, you don't have a sentence, right? So you've got to bind them, but the important point is the, these quantifiers appear all over the place, right? Here in the predicate, you've got one for this conjunct, you've got another one for the, the second conjunct of the consequent of the propositional function. So they appear all over the place. Do that when you're symbolizing. Do it the way we've been doing it, right? With the, with the identify the overall form, uh, rephrase, you know, identify the subject and predicate, rephrase them using the variables to it in the rephrasing such that you can read the symbolization off, right, and then do the symbolization with the quantifiers involved. So that, you know, there's a, clearly there's a quantifier going to be involved in that something, but put it as, you know, yes, this is important, put it, where should the quantifier, this is obviously going to get an existential quantifier, the word something, right, this word something, if we start from the beginning. Where should that quantifier go, right? Do, do, put it there, right? As what? As the second conjunct of the predicate phrase. Subject phrase, predicate phrase. Put it there. Do not put it at the beginning, okay? So she says, there will always be an uh, equivalent formulation with the quantifiers at the beginning, but the rules of translating quantifiers or moving them from here, where they should be, out to the beginning are not obvious, and you'll almost always go wrong when you, um, if you put them all at the beginning. There are some cases when it's okay, but forget about when it's okay and when it's not okay, just don't do it. Get in the habit of putting quantifiers in the right place, right? Don't put them at the beginning. You don't need to, right? These are all, there's nothing illegal or improper about having quantifiers within, um, some formulas and so on, right? So that's crucial. Okay. Um, yes, the next paragraph uh, says, notice all also that we have the same pattern here as the one variable logic, and she stresses again the crucial connection, universal quantifier with the hook, existential with the dot. Pretty much always, she says, it's not illegal to have formulas you know, an existential with a hook or a universal with a dot. You can have those formulas, but you're, uh, we say, almost certain to be mistaken if that's what you try and do. All right, so that's it. That'll do for 17. We'll see you for unit 18, and we'll get started on proofs.